Today we're going to discuss what is a hierarchy. Now, you may have heard this word before in science when it comes to classifying what animals eat. You may have heard this word in social studies when it comes to social standing back when there were castles and kings and queens and knights. But today we're going to focus on how do we use it for math. Our two main questions today are going to be, what is a hierarchy, and what do hierarchies have to do with geometry? So basically what a hierarchy is, it is a way of sorting things by importance or characteristics. Now, one way we could sort people is by where they live. Now, all of you probably live in the city of Myrtle Beach, as well as your brothers and sisters and many of your friends and a lot of your family. A lot of you live in the city of Myrtle Beach. What a hierarchy can do is it can allow us to be a little bit more specific to describe someone. So we can describe students by what school they go to. So some go to the primary, some go to the elementary, some go to the middle school, and some go to Myrtle Beach High School. Now, while you and your friends and siblings may go to different schools and you may help fall into different categories there, you still all live in the city of Myrtle Beach. Now, if I want to get a little bit more specific with you and your friends who go to the elementary school, I can classify you guys by grade. Now, some of you might go to third, some of you might go to fourth, and some of you might go to fifth grade. So let's say you're a fifth grader and you have a brother and sister in third grade. While you guys wouldn't fit into the same classification for grade, uh, you still both go to the elementary school and you both still live in the city of Myrtle Beach. Now, there are different ways to organize hierarchies. Another way is with these circles. As you can see, this one also says the city of Myrtle Beach. So everybody that lives in the city of Myrtle Beach fits inside this circle. Now, if we want to get a little bit more specific like last time, we can classify everyone by what school they go to. So again, we have the primary, elementary, middle, and high school. Now, whatever school you go to, you would go in that circle. Now, in this area, you'll see there is no circle, and that might be where your parents or your neighbors go because they don't fit in the primary, elementary, middle, or high school circles because they don't go to school anymore, but they still live in the city of Myrtle Beach, so they could be a part of our chart as well. Now, if we want to get more specific by school, we can see what grades go to each school. In the primary school, we got kindergarten, first and second grade. In the elementary, we have third, fourth, and fifth grade. In the middle school, we have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And in the high school, we have ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th grade. So let's find you, a fifth grader. Now there's different ways to classify you. Obviously first, we can say, hey, you're in fifth grade. If I wanted to find another way to classify you, well, look what circle you're in. You're in the elementary school, so we can also say you're an elementary student. But if you look at the biggest circle, we can also say you're a citizen of the city of Myrtle Beach. But let's say you had a brother or sister again in the third grade. We can't say you're in the same grade, but if you take a look, you're both in the elementary school circle. So you're both elementary students, and you're both in the big circle saying that you both live in the city of Myrtle Beach. Let's say you had an older sibling, though. Let's say that they are in eighth grade. Now, you obviously have different grades, so we can't say that you have the same grade. Uh, and when we look at what school you're both in, you're in the elementary and they're in the middle school. So we can't say you have the same school, but you are still both in the same circle saying that you live in the city of Myrtle Beach. And over here is still your parent or neighbors who don't go to a school, but you're all living in the city of Myrtle Beach. Let's take a look at some other items. What are some ways that you could sort the following objects? Let's take a look. Did you sort them by fruits or vegetables? Did you sort them by whether they were straight or round? Did you sort them by color? All these ways of sorting are great uses for our hierarchy. For example, all of these things are food. So if I wanted to find one word that describes everything that I showed you, it would be food. 
carrots, bananas, apples, broccoli, oranges, tomatoes, pears, and corn are all food. So they all fit in this first box. But if I want to get a little bit more specific and classify them a little bit more specifically, I could say some of them are fruits and some of them are vegetables. And that might look something like this. On the left side, we have our fruits, bananas, apples, oranges, and pears. And on the right, we have our vegetables, carrots, broccoli, tomatoes, and corn. Now, while I did classify them and we found out how they are different, if you guys go back to the top, they are still all food. So I can call them all food. They're just different types of food. Now, if I want to get a little bit more specific, I can use one of my other classifications from before. I can sort them by straight and round fruits and vegetables. So as you can see at the bottom, we have our bananas is a straight fruit. Meanwhile, apples, pears, and oranges are more of round fruits. And on the other side, we have our straight vegetables like corn, broccoli, and carrots, and then our round vegetables like tomatoes. So let's compare some of these. Let's compare apples and oranges. Well, what do they have in common? Well, first of all, they're both round, so we could say they're both round foods. Um, we could also say that they are both fruits because they both fit into that classification. And then finally, they're still both food. So if we're looking for ways to describe apples and oranges, we could say they're round, fruit, and food. Let's compare a banana to an apple, though. They have different shapes, so we can't say that they have that in common, but they are both still fruits. And they're both still food. So when we talk about bananas and apples and we want to talk about what they have in common, we could say, yeah, they're both fruits and they're both foods. Let's compare broccoli and apples, though. They don't seem to have a lot in common. One is round and one is straight. One is a fruit and one is a vegetable. But if we're looking for something that they have in common, they are both food. So we can say that broccoli and apples are both food. So we talked about what is a hierarchy, but let's talk about what it has to do with geometry. Take a look at this hierarchy. At the top, we have polygons. Polygons are just shapes with at least three straight sides and angles. Now, one type of polygon is triangles. Triangles are just three-sided figures, and we have three types of triangles, and those are scalene, equilateral, and isosceles. Now, while we have three types of triangles, we can classify them even further. Some of them can be right triangles, like scalene and isosceles. Some of them can be obtuse triangles, like scalene and isosceles. And some of them can be acute, which can be scalene, equilateral, and isosceles. So let's see how we can use this hierarchy to describe a triangle. Here I have a triangle, and it has three angles that are all less than 90 degrees. So the first way I could classify it is by saying that it is an acute triangle. So as you can see by this hierarchy, acute triangles can be scalene, equilateral, or isosceles. So let's take a look at our triangle to see which one this would be. Looking at the triangle, you can see one side has one dash mark and two sides have two dash marks. Again, those two dash marks tell me that those two sides are the same length. So the triangle that has two sides that are the same length is isosceles. So this triangle here is an acute triangle and it's an isosceles triangle. And if we go up our hierarchy, you can see that all isosceles triangles can just be called triangles, and all triangles can be called polygons. So using this hierarchy to describe this triangle, I can say that it is an acute isosceles triangle, and it is still a polygon. So that is what a hierarchy is. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I hope you have a better understanding of how to use these to help you classify shapes.